Welcome to Cartoon Crossroads Columbus, or CXC 2021. Our four-day celebration of cartoon art couldn't happen without our partner organizations and volunteers, to whom we are eternally grateful. CXC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our annual festival is free and open to the public, but it relies on corporate and grant support as well as individual donors. We're grateful for their support. Check out the Support CXC link on our website to find out how you can help us create meaningful connections between the people who make comics and those who read them. Cartoon Crossroads Columbus acknowledges that the ancient ancestors of the Eastern Woodlands tribe, now referred to as the Adena and Hopewell cultures, inhabited the land we know as Ohio. Their descendants include the living nations of the Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, Delaware, and Seneca, Cayuga. We honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this place where we gather. We hope you enjoy this event. Don't get forget to visit our virtual expo at cartooncrossroadscolumbus.org and keep the conversation going in our Discord channel, which you can find at cartooncrossroadscolumbus.org backslash Discord. All right, hello, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm CM Campbell here with Ronald Wimberly. Um, shit, goddamn. Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> We're here, CXC. I'm Ronald Wimberly. Uh, I put out a newspaper called Lab Magazine. It's a cartoon newspaper. Uh, I also did Prince of Cats and uh, Sentences: The Life of MF Grimm. Um, I've done a bunch of other stuff too, but yeah, lighten up on the internet. Yep. Uh, Whatever. But most recently, we actually uh, we have Ronald here to uh, engage with CMA for an upcoming exhibi exhibition, and uh, we wanted to just chat with him about uh, the work he's doing with Lab and CMA as a whole. So uh, opening up. Uh, cool. Let's talk. Yeah, this, let's talk. Uh, so this is not your first time at CMA. Mm -hmm. You've done this before. Not your mm -hmm. first rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, when last were you here? Uh, around three or four years ago, I did the residency, the cartoon residency, and I, I guess this is the 10 year anniversary of that, uh, residency. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did the residency. I, uh, stayed in the Thurber house, the, um, notoriously haunted Thurber house. Um, uh, yeah, it was great. And I like the co comics community here. It's cool. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're happy to have you back here, you know, Thank you. uh, like since then, you've been doing a lot of things. You've been kind mm. of expanding your horizons, mm. broadening your catalog, mm. uh, not only in comics but continuing to make work in other mediums. And 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 many rights. You're you're as the editor of Lab. You're mm. a curator in in your own right. And I'm curious yeah. as you approach this uh, this exhibition, and, and how do you feel like you are going to? Uh, capitalize on the space is there anything that you specifically had in mind with that experience um yeah well one of the things i was looking forward to was presenting um or having the opportunity to present um sort of a realization of how i think about you know <clears throat> comics as as a work of art you know like um presenting the printed medium as the final work and presenting the um production art and the things that go into it as part of like the process but not necessarily as like a sacred object but just like the pieces of the thing that you know we give to the audience yeah or would like to give but probably charge for <laughs> <laughs> and uh as you're presenting like the lab work how does it compare to like the comics pages i know that there's a lot of people who've been presenting a lot of comics recently mm. and they kind of have found their way into more gallery spaces mm. and being kind of presented in different ways mm. um now that you have this kind of uh newsprint media mm. uh are there any kind of new challenges to kind of bring that to an art space and kind of showing folks i mean i think the idea is that um you know, lab the newspaper in your hands. It's like, uh, lab is, comics aren't like paintings, at least mine aren't, you know. Um, it's native medium is a reproductive medium, reproduced medium, right? So I think most exhibitions kind of go at it as if like taking a tour through a Coca-Cola bottling plant 
you know, it's like the museum is the bottling plant, you know what I mean? But like, that's not like comics is the Coca-Cola, right? Like it's the experience yeah. of like opening the bottle and drinking yeah. it. And like, what's beautiful about it is that everyone can, you know, experience it in their own way, like, and they can have it in their hands. So I wanted to, uh, with this exhibition, working, you know, with the folks at um, CMA, present that idea. And yeah, to present the production art, you know, the original art, um, as something that's a precursor to that um, final, uh, or final work, or the work as it, it interacts with the audience or the viewer. So the production art is just, yeah, it's, they're fragments of the final. Well, for, for those who don't know, I'm just curious, how many issues are currently out of Lab? Uh, three. Three issues. Yeah, working on a fourth one later this year. Okay, all right. And uh, I'm actually uh, curious about the way you've approached numbering mm. those issues. Mm. Because uh, the most uh, recent issue was was number four. If I'm, I'm not sure if I read them all in chronological mm. order. <laughs> What's the cover look like? Uh... I'm trying to think of the cover. It was the one where you had uh, the opening letter. It was about death. Okay. It was the Frankenstein yeah. issue. No. I mean, it doesn't matter in wh which order you read them, but like, that's not the most, la that's not the latest, but like, yeah. That's, that's number four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's number four. Yeah. All right, all right. What, what's yeah. the latest issue? Uh, number two. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, why? Um, <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, uh, yeah, I don't approach. know. I think that's a I think that's a nice, that's a question for the audience to ask to answer. Like obviously the numerical system is not chronological, right? Yeah. So then what is it? I think is you know, it's just pl it's playful. Something for them to consider. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, uh I think Something's really in that's really interesting is the fact that you are transitioning mm -hmm. from uh, a large body of comics works. You worked with uh, Marvel and DC. Mm -hmm. You worked with a lot of different properties. Just a little bit here and there. You know, yeah. You, yeah. You, you and you worked on your own independent projects, mm -hmm. and um, it feels like a lot of your work is being informed by that kind of relationship with mm -hmm. like issues and and uh, things like that. Uh, speaking of that, what do you mean by what do you mean by that? Like. Uh, uh, just this, uh, it feels like there is a relationship between having the multiples, having uh, a collector's market. Okay, so uh, serialized. And, 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 okay. Yeah, the, the, the chronicle nature of the comics industry mm. and this notion of the value of the number one mm. or the number zero and what I those numbers kind of mean. I've never, I've never thought, I've never thought very much about that because like I've never worked on a, I've never worked on a, I've only done fill-ins on monthly books. I've never been a principal artist on a monthly book ever. So, and I'm not a I'm not a collector in that sense either. And um, in my work with Image, um, yeah, or even working with editors, I have to be made. You know, like I had to learn how to think about even working with the direct market and thinking about like what their needs are and like you know. I remember the one thing I remember is like, oh, well, if your book is this shape, then like only 20 direct market stores will carry it because like it doesn't fit on their shelf, which like at the time I was like, that's ridiculous because like, I don't know, books, it's like a bookstore being like, oh yeah, well, we can't carry Harry Potter because it's not, you know, six by four or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like a ridiculous thing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that informs maybe my my uh nostalgia f and i think of that like that's a self-deprecating thing for me to say but my nostalgic relationship to newsstands uh maybe informs more like my approach to the work or um yeah that sort of social relationship you know what i mean like newsstands newspapers the funnies um that's informed more like where we where I am now with lab so you weren't uh, so historically have you been like a big comic book collector or anything like that um, going to comic book shops making sure that you get like an entire run of so and so no 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 um, the most I would do is like maybe going to um, like Mandurake in Tokyo and getting art books 
Like that's something I would do. Um, before there was an online, I didn't really, you know, I, I have never read a full run of a thing like, well, there's no such thing as a full run of a thing in Western comics, right? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the epics, the serials, yeah, the I never, adventures. I never, I never go, I never, I never done it. Like, um, one or two issues there. Like, if it wasn't a graphic, if it wasn't collected, no, nah, I don't have the patience for it. Like, I don't want to start a story in one book and then have to read it. And, like, another, you know, like, oh, I'm going to re- finish this. I start in Spider-Man, I'm going to finish in the Avengers. I have no interest in that. <laughs> like... No, not into it. <laughs> no, um, no. it. It's interesting just because it feels like there is a, a, a bit of a, an arc there. Wait a minute. Oh. When I was in high school, a buddy of mine, when uh, the Marvel Super Heroes game came out, mm-hmm. this is how they got me. Because I worked in an arcade. Oh. I loved Marvel Super Heroes. Yeah. So I did read, and I was mostly reading secondhand from the homie, the one where like... The character is at the end of one of the Marvel superheroes. He's like, looks like Magneto, but he's not. Like, he's like a, you know, it was some big onslaught. Crosses. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. like the only okay. one I. <laughs> Man, onslaught. Oh, I got opinions. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> How'd you enjoy it? Was that a good experience? I don't even remember it. All right, that's solid. That's a good, good choice. <laughs> yeah. It was sexy. It was a, it was a very good looking book. It was very oh, yeah. clean. <laughs> okay. I don't remember much of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's that's interesting. I mean, uh, especially considering uh, like you're talking about like uh, these comic strips, and, and um, it's it, when I look at uh, Prince of Cats, like immediately. I don't know if this was intentional, mm. but something about it reminds me of like uh, like French comics. Mm. Um, it could be the the layouts or even the scale mm. that the pages are at, but something screams like this kind of, you know. Uh, like European vibe yeah and uh, okay. it was one of those things where that relationship with the medium felt uh, a little less uh, like it was writing on mm. American comics aesthetics I um, think yeah the yeah. layouts probably layout wise like I mean I can't I don't even know how many if I think about my comics diet starting out yeah there was a little bit of that but it was like Mobius um uh who else like some some weird like the comics in Jim Hanley's in New York City there was a comic book store there and it had a section that had yeah like the european stuff in the back but it was also with kind of like dirty comics so <laughs> um Dave Cooper like Ripple like all that stuff yeah those were the things like those comics were the comics and like THB like those were the comics that had like the biggest impression on me like um coming out of high school uh, I mean, um, Slow Jams uh, was, like, massive. Those were the comics that had the biggest impression on me. The Slow Jams I read in um, uh, Jordan Crane's anthology. Uh, I can't think of it right now. Yeah, but anyway. None. None, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah none. <laughs> non, non, was, non was the... Non, there. non was something I collected before I got into college. That okay. Was, that I got most of mixed. They're like I stopped, and then when I went to school, there was one that came out that was like silk screened or something. Like it was some crazy. It looked too expensive, so I didn't get it. Yeah, no. They but I don't know how much it costs. I never, I never checked. They, I never checked to see how much. They it all looked like fancy comics to me. <laughs> the first, the, a com- couple of them I had, they were just like you know, they were kind of like you know pamphlets, you know, kind of, but they weren't, you know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Chick tracks. I read probably more chick tracks than I read Marvel comics. Oh, see, that's see this. Uh, they were just around. It's not because I liked them. It's like they'd be in the bathroom, at you know, there's a church meeting or something. They would be around, so I would read them. You know. See, I, it's it's interesting looking at your work. I feel like I see like the deep cuts. Hmm. Uh, uh, I was once told by a professor, "You're only as original as your references are obscure." Hmm. And so, uh, like looking at a lot of the work, uh, it's interesting because I get a sense there's a, a lot of artists have like a thesis or a style and uh looking at your work it seems to have more of a personality than a, than a, a style or a thesis hmm. it seems to kind of be exploring something and, and and navigating something um like looking back at you know that transition from uh where you were you went to Pratt, mm-hmm. right 
so where you were in Pratt and, and working on comics uh, to now, uh, kind of finding yourself in kind of uh, expanding beyond the, the confines of comics into these other mediums. Mm. Uh, do you think that was a trajectory that you kind of planned out that you were hoping for to kind of... Uh, I always wanted to make... I, well, my primary... The things that I liked when I was growing up, like I always liked games and animation more than comics, but I loved comics, but I loved manga. You know what I mean? And I think I, I got into manga because I was into games and animation. <laughs> so, um, and... The thing is, I could always do man I could draw manga comics on my own. And when I got into Pratt, originally I was kind of, uh, my trajectory was illustration. Um, uh, my first focus was art direction, but then I switched to illustration. I was just like, you know, I don't want to fucking, you know, I'm happy and proud I got into the New Yorker, but like, I wasn't like, I wasn't someone who was like growing up. I was like, oh yeah, I want to be in the New Yorker, or like, I wasn't even like, oh, I want to be fucking, you know, I want to draw, like, I want to have a comic like the Peanuts or something. <laughs> I, was, I was never thinking that way, but then like, you know, around senior year, uh, I was like, well, I want to tell stories. I was intimidated by film and animation. Seemed like it was way too much work. So and like, I, it just seemed like a dream. It seemed like an unattainable dream. Um, and I think part of it was maybe I spent the last 20 years convincing myself that I deserve or I am good enough to do those things. Um, I do love comics. I think um, the way I experience them and love to do them is like on my own terms without sort of like the economic pressures or um, market pressures, right? Um, and those are the comics I kind of like to read most too, like cartoonists making things that are, you know, deeply personal. Uh, so to answer your question, was it part of a planned trajectory? I think plans and where you end up are just like, you know, coincidental. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> so like I don't even know if I had plans, if I had them. Like, do I, do, looking back, do I remember them properly? You know what I mean? Like, I think my plan has always been to, like, stay housed and fed. You know what I mean? And, like, do that as best as possible. And avoid, um, <laughs> avoid drawing things that make me not want to draw. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, actually, I think you, you bring up something that I, I was going to uh, talk about a little bit later on. But I'm actually... Uh, I feel like you've had the opportunity not only to, you know, uh, explore your own, like, desires of, of to stories you want to tell, mm -hmm. but actively you've had uh, um, what some may refer to as the luxury of working with licensed proper mm -hmm. properties. Uh, and <laughs> no, I've drawn, I mean, I've drawn things for, I've drawn things for writers who work with licensed properties. Yeah. Like, I didn't, you know, I don't feel like I have any... I don't feel like I have any agency as I express it in drawing someone else's script okay. for a licensed character. Okay. It's it's I'm doing fan art for money. Like I don't see it as and if I'm not a fan then like it's it's not a, it's not a it's not an honor. It's like I'm doing it's a labor. Yeah. It's in between I'm jobs, selling yeah. my labor and like yeah. and when I did it it was the most I could there were two things I was thinking. Um this is the most I can sell my labor for. And um, maybe if I do this enough, right, I'll get a chance to express my agency with, like, these characters at some point. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, I never got that opportunity. So, um, I don't, yeah, I don't consider it an honor at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, would you think that there's any, just, you don't have to say what, but huh. is there any uh, title in your mind? Yeah, I don't any have to property? say anything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't ever have to say anything. Right. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but like, is there, do you have any titles in mind where you could just be like, I want to do mm. that title? Like, um, honestly, I would, I would have loved to see, like, just, like, if you was on Black Dynamite for, mm. like, 20 years, I'd be cool with that. Mm. I'm just saying, I mean, hypothetically speaking. No, I mean, like, that's why, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would have no interest in that. I think, I forget if I wrote or I penciled. I think I penciled. Yeah, I penciled one. I don't think I... Yeah, I didn't write that. Yeah, shit. no, I'm saying if it. you wrote it, that would um, be... Yeah, I would have no interest in that. <laughs> I would rather watch it. Like, I, I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Um, it was cool drawing the characters, designing the characters with Chase over on the, um, on the animation. But, like, yeah, no, I have no interest in that joke. Like, 
I mean, the jokes are in the original, you know what I mean? It's like watching Rudy Ray Moore or something. Like, you know, it's already funny. I don't need that. I love to watch it, but like, I don't need to write it. You know what I mean? And I'm not a big enough fan of those movies to do something creative with that. Like, I don't have a lot to express around that type of, um, like, in that, you know, milieu. I don't know. But yeah, like, uh, if you had asked me this question, Five years ago, ten years ago, I definitely had would have something like I have, but it's like it's an art project. Like if if the if the social capital of a Batman or a Spider Man is the medium, like yes, I have something. So okay, like look, whenever someone makes something with this, it's guaranteed a gang of motherfuckers is gonna look at it. They're gonna put their eyes on it. So like that's why I want to do something with it, right? Or like. Oh, this represents a type of, like, this represents a type of, um, like, it's an Americana, right? Like, so, yeah, like, if you're, you're like, okay, well, it is, you know, like, Batman is the Campbell soup can. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> so, if you have a way of kind of, like, commenting on that, you know, you get, you get into someone's, like, it's motherfuckers who hate they hate the writing, you know what I mean? They hate the story, but they still buy the comic, you know what I mean? Like, having that power, having that power is something that I don't particularly have because, like, what I make, people kind of, like, they come to me for probably a particular political perspective, like, um, uh, you know, I'm I'm their brand, you know what I mean? Like, they're into it. If I worked on something like a Batman or a Spider-Man, it's like, I'm automatically in front of an audience that, like, probably wouldn't have anything to do with me otherwise and like that's powerful and that's what would appeal to me about working with those characters and they would have to be big i'm not always, well, why don't you pick you know why don't you pick uh a character that no one you know has touched it's like what's the point like, nobody <laughs> fucking cares you know? we're like oh why don't you make the uh your own version of those characters because like i think i don't i have no interest in making i don't no interest in superheroes like why, why would i do that i've no, like, I don't want to tell a superhero story. No, I want to, like, take this capital that this character has and I want to do something with it and comment on what it is. You know, like, I have no interest in, you know, why would I want to do something that was the the cultural product of something like 60, 70 years ago? Like, I'm, like, that's not interesting to me, but, like, the fact that this has still kind of lasted up to this point is interesting to me. And the fact that people are looking at it and people are so emotionally engaged with this thing that's, like, an artifact of, like, a different time and history and all that shit. Yeah, that's what I want to. That's what I want to fuck with. Yeah, you know, I want to get into people's homes who just did not expect me to get into. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it, it's uh, interesting. The, the the the. And that's why I think I've never gotten that opportunity. <laughs> I think I failed a long time know. ago by that. Yeah, they know. Like, if I had been more shrewd about it, I probably could have, you know, done it. Or if I had done like maybe, you know, um, made a, you know had some sort of social capital in a sense where like a corporation like Marvel or DC uh, could garner some value from using me, my blackness as a spectacle. Like I probably would have had the opportunity, but like I'm not that big yet. <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, like in terms of you being not that big yet, mm. uh, in my mind, there is this degree of control over what's getting printed. That, mm. that is where that comes from. I'm sure you're talking about scale, but like, uh, I feel like at this point you you've worked for the New Yorker. Mm. You, you've done work for the New York Times. You've done work. No, for I almost oh, yeah, did work. For almost the did work for the New York yeah. Times. I hope they paid you. But <laughs> no, no, they paid me. It was okay, great. Go, no, cool. very professional, very cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Outside of my printing. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> but but as far as like uh, like at this point, you are yeah, you and uh, Josh O'Neill. Mm -hmm are now the editors mm. of your own publication mm. and you are on the opposite end of that kind of conversation mm. in terms of engaging with uh, given artist platforms mm. and uh, you know getting essay writers it's a tiny interviewing platform. people <laughs> but hey, we print a we hey, print a few you know. thousand <laughs> you know what I mean like we print a few thousand so like it's out there yeah, yeah but no, but now that you kind of are on the opposite end of, of that space mm. do you think there's any uh, lessons that you've walked away from uh, being a contributor to to providing that platform and the way that you uh, engage with your artists? That's a heavy question. 
yeah, I don't know, just humility. I just think, um, like, also my designers, Mael, Chloe, Natalie, like, thinking about the collective nature of making the paper is, I think the closest I've gotten to doing something like as an art practice, collaborative art practice that was like fulfilling in, in a way beyond like kind of doing things as much as possible on my own. Um, also like sometimes, you know, you might set out to be, oh, I want a platform and do all of this. doesn't mean anything if people don't want it. You know what I mean? If people, if you can't reach the people who want, who might want the platform or like some people aren't in the space to jump on the platform, you know, like, you know, um, I think about what I had to do to get to the point to create the platform for myself. Like some people are going to have to do that for themselves. Like there's no sort of shortcut, you know what I mean? Like, um, some people might be like, Oh yeah, like this is cool. It's, um, it just, it just more and more, maybe this is confirmation bias for me, just like the, the um, unpredictable nature of it all, you know, in terms of like platforming, like it's platforming is such a presumptuous way of thinking about it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so like now in a way I'm trying to like, well, what's, what's the balance, what's the balance and maybe the praxis of what I want to do, but the balance between like, okay, I'm just going to put the people on that I want to put on. And, like, let me think about what's a just way of, like, you know, doing this. You know what I mean? Because, like, I think almost now it's like, well, let me try to be a better version of the person I want to be. And maybe then it will lead to me creating the thing that I want to create. As opposed to, like, let me just from, you know, reverse engineer, like, try to put all these people together that I think might want to be in this new paper. It's like, nah. No. And also being confident and just cool with like, mm, this is what I want to be in here. You know what I mean? Like, this is where I'm at now and yeah. not being bashful about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, something that crosses my mind, especially with this kind of conversation mm -hmm. around the platform is- um, This is for other cartoonists. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, is like kind of the notion of community and community engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm. Do you think that you've ever had uh, any conversations or a reputation or anything involving like labels surrounding like being uh, an activist artist or being uh, specifically identified as I've never asked. political? I've never asked. I've never been curious about it. I mean, like, I think I've, you know, I'm, I've definitely, I speak to, I've been speaking to like a political framing of art, you know, for a long time. I think at this point, I'm less interested in having that conversation because um, I, and I, I've, I've started to think differently about political action and how it relates to art. So um, I still think the political framework is important when looking at, you know, like what, what art might be indicative of, like how art is reflecting like a soul or political unconscious in our world like I still think that's important I haven't thought too much about how people people definitely think about me as being political like I you know like even with the newspaper and curating often cartoonists will um give something that's supposed to be like heady or political or you know and I'm like that's not what I'm particularly looking for um that was our initial issue which I just wanted the initial issue to be, it's the, the theme is like kind of political nakedness, right? Like number zero, the theme is like, okay, I'm laying out my subjectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not so much, la you know, lab is like, and that was the hard part about doing the Kickstarter where it's just like, okay, well, oh, it's a newspaper about, uh, um, black identity or something it's like no it's not <laughs> and like the funny thing is is like when we did the kickstarter the first kickstarter i had barely even started to curate the paper right and you know josh is like yes yeah, so we gotta say this or we gotta say something to the people who are gonna get this and i'm like all right i guess this is an act of uh robbery <laughs> because like 
I'm presenting something. It's like, I don't know what this is going to be until literally we send it off to the printer, you know? And I can tell you right now, it's not going to be a meditation on identity because I have like no interest in it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so, um, so like I, you know, we had to come up with something that it might, you know, deal with like the, the pop culture dialectic is, I feel like the easiest thing for me to say, because it's literally just, okay. It just means that a bunch of pop culture and comics will be in here that are going to have a dialectic with each other. Like anytime you put any two things next to each yeah. other. Right? <laughs> so like, in a, in a weird sort of way, it's like an aphorism. Um, but anyway, I don't know if that answers your question. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't care I, what people think. Yeah. About me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's I, I find uh, it interesting when when talking about you with uh, yeah. uh, other artists, um, usually they're white, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> and 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 the the like they'll bring you up and be like, yo, mm. check this out. And it, it the conversation is usually framed around race. Mm-hmm. And I'm, uh, I mean, at this point, based on your answer, I'm under the impression that, you know, however people present you is not mm. under your control. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and so that's just what it is. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it is an interesting uh, place to occupy. I think that even reading, I remember the first time someone uh, presented me uh, nigga aesthetics. Mm. Um my response was like, I know. <laughs> and that was my immediate response. It's like, yeah, nah, I get it. And um, it was only revisiting uh, the article this weekend that kind of like all of these like ideas and thoughts about how it is not a conversation piece. Mm. It's, it's, it feels like uh, in their secret. And um, yeah, I was just thinking about the framework of me as a, a, a black author mm. who engages with uh, the black aesthetic mm. Um, like being able to have that conversation with those audiences. It, it was just, the framing was interesting in terms of that political stance. Yeah, that was for black artists, really. That was like for black artists, bl- other black cartoonists, and maybe people who are in the market for that. Like a lot of that had to do with just like, man, you know, um, Look, I have labs, so I get to. I don't have to fucking put it on Twitter. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, yeah, I'm not gonna pop off on Twitter now. I'm gonna put it in a newspaper. Right? Like, you know, that's all it is. It's like my feelings around things that I, you know, I see. I'm like, we let's stop with all of this. So, um, I wanted to have a long form, yeah, discussion about that. And like, yeah, if somebody claps back and like putting in the work and like or even just continuing the conversation around it and is willing to put the work and the effort into producing something like that, like in, in, in a way, and hopefully the language, I gotta say, the language was a little bit too obscure in lab number zero. And like, um, what I would like to do is to continue to have the conversation in a way that like everyone who's willing to put the work in and like, you know, look critically and like, quietly and like <laughs> at these things like i want that because con- i can't i feel like yo we're gonna figure these things out together it's like you know like there's a lot you know that newspaper is dealing with a lot of things that were on my mind about yeah if it's identity it's like the market of identity like how you know um identity and the sort of the product of identity is sold (laughs) like how it is on the market how it relates to the market um and like nigga aesthetics is about like you know it's about how you know uh, a particular aesthetic i'm not going to say what it's about (laughs) read read, read the article (laughs) but like I'm, i'm i'm very interested in like how certain aesthetics come into being and like how they um how they're commodified in the in the present space and maybe what their political function is well i'm 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 under the impression because after kind of uh going through uh, a a large body of your work in a mm-hmm. short period of time when i was doing research for this interview um whether it was uh lighten up or mm-hmm. um let me try to get this title right it's um black history from the voices um, oh, Black History in Its Own Words. Yeah, yeah. Black History in Its Own Words. That was words. just like, I tell you, Lighten Up and Black History in Its Own Words were both the book and like the original were like, the like take it as you will, um, you know, take it as you will. Those are like the ideas of white people. Like, 
they're all, you know, like, they're kind of like, anyway, I, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> all right, all right. No, continue, though, but continue, continue. Yeah, continue. no, um, I feel like I got more out of reading all three of those mm. within a short period of time. Mm. I think that's one of the, the interesting things, uh, um, about like this process of getting ready for this interview was mm. being able to go through uh, just so much of your work and, and reading several of your interviews and uh, piecing together a person because I mm. do f feel like there is um, these gaps between the work. I think the mm. two works that have the closest relationships is Sentences mm. and uh, Prince of Cats mm. but uh, because that shit's so New York. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but like, but uh, as I read them in like this kind of this just like marathon, mm. um, getting a sense of a person and the way they feel about something, even if it's not, you know, there's no way it's you <laughs> on a page. I get a, a, this deep sense of a direction, mm. uh, an idea um, that it's not it's not like all of this is about this one sentence, mm. but it's uh, feels uh, philo philosophically um, locked in. I feel mm. like I could, if you, if you gave me some yarn mm. and a map, I could take all of them pieces and start drawing like pieces of yarn. Yeah. Conspiracy. I think that would say, I mean, right. <laughs> you know? But like the, that would all, that would always probably say more about you than it would about me. Right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but this was a, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, maybe it's a part of who I am. Um, but like to clarify with, um, lighten up and, uh, black history in its own words. Like, I think, those are really interesting because because of the editorial quality meaning like who was interested in this particular story of mine or my particular you know like those both were works like with black history in its own words well with lighten up originally it started i told a told a story to matt bores um who was you know it's like head editor at the nib and he's like, oh, that's an interesting story. You should, you know, like, you should do that. So then I did it. Um, I wrote like a little, uh, did a little brief, you know, like a sketch of it. And he kind of then, he wanted, I won't say he insisted, but I felt like he insisted. That's the homie though. Don't yeah. get twisted. <laughs> um, that I have a picture of myself or a representation of myself, which I like understood to be like, well, for the reader, this means that I'm an authority. Like I have a standpoint that gives me the authority to speak on this thing, which like to me, I felt kind of sabotages like a critical way of approaching the subject matter. And also while at the same time presenting, uh, presenting like myself, my body, like the spectacle of myself to the market, you know, yeah. like as being the argument, <laughs> right? Like yeah. that's, the, that's, <laughs> that's the primary argument. He's black. So he knows. Um, <laughs> And, and so like the whole, the whole, um, by the way, I consider that cartoon to be like, man, I'm the most ambivalent about that cartoon almost <laughs> out of all of my work. Because like, I feel like most of the time, like it's one of the most alienating works I've ever made because like people come and they talk to me about it or like they cite it, they talk about it. And I'm like, wow, I've never made a work that I felt that I felt that I've tried my hardest to articulate something where it's the most misunderstood than that cartoon. Yeah. And like, that's why you'll probably never see me do, I've thought about doing some essays like that. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, I'm just never going to do this. And political cartoons in general. I'm like, first of all, I don't want to make cartoons that are just like, uh, some droll amusement for liberals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah, I guess I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Actually, I mean, uh, it, um, just no, that's, none of that's what you asked for. So. Oh no, no, no! no I'm, honestly, I'm just uh, you know, it, it, uh. <laughs> I, I don't feel like there is a direct answer to any of the, mm. the questions. You know, um, like uh, actually something that's been going through my mind, and something that I've actually been engaging with specifically because a lot of my work, uh, you, you know, that Chris Rock uh, bit. Hmm. Uh, where the difference between a black person oh and yeah the one he canceled yeah and he was just like not doing this no yeah, more yeah. this is bullshit mm -hmm. like that that is I give kind props of like, for that you know? <laughs> right um, this this, but this act of um, what I've identified and you know if you don't like the language by all means just, just listen to the meaning mm -hmm. uh, of virtue signaling mm -hmm. like taking the time to highlight hey just in case you think this is that don't mm -hmm. get it twisted mm -hmm. this is what this is um, the act of virtue signaling in your work to make sure that there is something that is 
uh, for the sake of clarity. I mean, I'm wondering how you feel about uh, some of those. It's just something that's been running around in my head in terms of being a black artist who knows that when making comics, there are going to be a large swath of white readers hmm. uh, that might misinterpret the work that you do. Uh, do you feel like that's something that crosses your mind? Like, Not so much. I mean, I don't... I don't think so. I mean, even after the lighten up thing, I'm not, it wasn't, I, honestly, it wasn't even white people who bothered me, like, because they <laughs> misinterpreted. I don't expect white people to understand anything, you know, particularly, and I'm not, you know, I think alienation for me doesn't come from, like, white people doing what white people do. Like, alienation comes for me from being in a space where I've assumed and that's like the the you know emphasis on assumed that because of some sort of a shared assumed shared um experience that's that people might understand me you know or understand what i'm saying um and i think you know that has you know personal growth you know like i have to grow past that and i think with lighten up that was a part of it too like I, the, some of the big assumptions with lighting up was, yeah, that people would understand that based on like either um, what they assume or I assume to be a shared sort of standpoint, um, or uh, an assumption that <laughs> art, something made artfully, but also art. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. somewhere in between art and like. Uh, just rhetoric, <laughs> you know, uh, an essay, um, that, that can convey meaning beyond the sort of material quality of it, you know, like a strict meaning, you know, like, um, and I think one, like you gotta have the key, what do they call it? The legend. You got the, you gotta have the legend, right? Which might even be a whole way of looking at things and understanding and reading art you know what i mean to extract some sort of particular value from it it's like if you don't have the legend you don't necessarily understand like you could look at you know um what is it our mutt you know like duchamp right like you could look at that and be like okay well if you don't have the legend if you don't have the framework to understand what's going on there you're not going to necessarily get any meaning you might just walk up to it and pee in it you know what i mean like yeah. you got a different meaning from that right like and the pee comes out in the gallery like, <laughs> you know what I, mean? Like, I mean who's to say that you got the wrong meaning you know what i mean yeah. like um but like so that that was an assumption so i learned i i mean i love that i did the comic because i learned a lot from doing that comic um it just make it just made for and not particularly with white people but it made for a lot of like frustrating not even conversations, because when someone comes up to me and talks to me about lighting up, I just listen. Yeah. It's like, I don't have anything to say about it. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, uh, yeah we're pretty much uh, out of time. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, just pause. Thank you for, for being here and talking with us. Uh, and uh, thank you for being in Columbus. Thank you for being uh, at CMA. And thank you for, you know, being part of CXC. We all appreciate you being here. Oh. Um, if you have any details uh, about the show that you'd like to uh, share with the audience, mm -hmm. uh, uh, by all means, let them know. I'm like, yo, thanks for having me. Like, thanks, you know, Columbus has always been very welcoming to me, despite how grumpy or weird I am, <laughs> uh, inviting me into their, their world and their space and giving me, you know, opportunities that, like, are rarely afforded, you know, myself or like maybe even some cartoonists in general and i think being an important part of the um the the culture you know what i mean like i think thanks for all of that and uh i want y'all to come out i know it's covid don't risk your life make sure you check to see what the news is like but you know come out wear a mask yeah look at the work get your shots get all your shots you know what i mean like double mask it 
if you got a double mask, a double mask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wear, wear a condom, like, yo, you know, like, all of that. You know, like, Don't wear do, shorts. You know wear pants. I mean? Like, yeah, do the things that you're supposed to do. Wash your hands. You know what I mean? Wash your feet. Wash your, your legs. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, do all of that. Yeah. You Behind know? the ears. Behind the ears. Yeah, yeah that's where COVID hides. That's, that's, not, not, science. Yeah, that's not, not science. That's not science. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald Wimberly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Uh, we'll, um, mm -hmm. yeah, go to CMA, check out the exhibit. It's up now. Y'all take care. <laughs>